Hey guys and welcome back to Star Control 2. Today we're in green space at the moment and we're heading for that planet that was completely inconspicuously off to the right here. Just one note I'd like to say, I love the new music for Quasi Space done by the Precursors. So Some people like the original, some people like the Precursor music. I'm kind of 50-50 on it but I thought I'd use the Precursor music for this LP. Anyway, we're just about to get there so let's see what we find. Ha-ha! Our clever ward has found our nook in time. You are the first brave human. No others have made the trip. This is our home world, Falealorophily, nestled safe in this true space eddy. The portal you pass through is a rarity, a natural point of interdimensional fatigue. We use this phenomena to speed our transit through the realities. We are wondering, have you met with the Ungar recently? We entrusted an injured talking pet into their care, and we were curious about its progress. Forgive us if we forget the importance you attach to such events as this. Our context is infinitely broader than yours in scope, both in space and time. Nevertheless, to please you, I shall try to recall. Yes, now I remember, here is the sequence. The Urquan fleets have moved through your solar system, and you are defeated. Your people make the choice not to fight with and for the Urquan. A shield is cast about your world. Your people are now safe. This makes us happy. The Armada departs your star system and moves toward the remaining Alliance members, ourselves, the Silene, the Yehat, and their adopted Shofixti. The Yehat and Shofixti withdraw to Delta Gorno, but they do not permit the Cyrene to follow. We are content with the flow of events, and leave the area to return here. From our perspective, this sequence of events ends here. Soon after the Urquan defeated the Yehat and imprisoned the Cyrene in Beetlejuice, their siblings arrive to initiate the doctrinal conflict this battle continues as we speak. You desire honesty. It is given. We have visited your world for many thousands of years into your species past. We have changed things, made modifications. Our motives are multiple. Our desires complex. Part of what we do on Earth is for your own protection. There are parasites, creatures who dwell beyond. They have names, but you do not know them. They would like to find you, but they are blind to your presence, unless you show yourselves. The androsynths showed themselves, and something noticed them. There are no more androsynths now, only ores. No. In a way, ignorance is your armor, your best protection. They cannot see you now. They cannot smell you. Much of our work with your people involved making you invisible, changing your smell. If I tell you more, you will look where you could never look before. And while you are looking, you can and will be seen. You do not want to be seen. As you know, we live in a dimension adjacent to hyperspace, which we call quasi-space. Our ships move between these dimensions through weaknesses in the interdimensional fabric. Although many such weaknesses, or portals, exist which lead from our dimension quasi-space to various locations in hyperspace, there is only one naturally occurring portal which will transport a ship from hyperspace to quasi-space. We therefore find it convenient to generate our own portals artificially, with focused dimensional fatigue rays. As a sign of our long-standing relationship with your species, we would happily fit your vessel with a portal spawner of its own. But your ship is so massive, our units would be ineffective. However, we suspect you may find a sufficiently powerful warp pod key element in a portal spawner in the wreck of the Earth Corn Trainer on the seventh world at Alpha Bonus. Bring that one pod back here and we will prepare a portal spawner for your vessel. We are an 
endlessly curious people. And we spend much of our time on, how should I say, reconnaissance missions. During one such trip, we witnessed the crash landing of an Urquhorn Dreadnought on the surface of Alpha Pavonis 7. Normally, when an Urquhorn vessel is disabled, it automatically engages self-annihilation circuits to prevent other species from learning the Urquhorn's technological secret. In this case, however, these circuits must have failed. The Dreadnought did not disintegrate on impact. We landed to explore the wreckage and were amazed to find a survivor, a talking pet. As you may know, the Urquhorn used these non-sentient creatures for the task of interspecies translation, a task the Urquhorn find ultimately demeaning. The talking pet was severely injured, and we did what we could for the poor creature. But it grew clear that without superior measures, the talking pet would die. We turned to the Unga, whom we have known for many centuries. Their bioscience skills are far superior to our own. The Unga promised to do what they could and let us know how the pet fared. We have not heard from the Unga since. Perhaps if you are traveling through their stores, you can ask them to us. Goodbye, clever child. Why does this whole thing with a talking pet and the umgar make me nervous? Anyway, once again I'm going to lead you through where we need to go because it can be confusing since all these stars are marked unknown. It's the closest one that we need to go to. Unfortunately, the new hyperspace music is actually one of the few tracks that I think is inferior to the original music. I mean, the music is still good, but I would have preferred the original hyperspace music. Anyway, on to Alpha Pavonis. And here we are in the system now. If you remember, the Melnorme said that it was a blue world, so we could have found it ourselves, but... Uh, the Ari Lu told us basically exactly where to find it. So let's have a quick scan and see what's down there. Well, I've got some minerals down there, and that's a lot of biosignatures, so I really could mine this world quite nicely. Yeah, get down there and see what I can pick up. Obviously, oh god, there's fire everywhere! Hey, look at the speed of my planet lander. Yeah, that's awesome. I love the look of those worms. <laughs> anyway, here's the... Oh. oh. Yeah. Um. Tell you what. Stop arsing around. Get down there and get that dreadnought. Okay, so with that done, let's head back to the portal spawner. Oh god, I'm running out of days. Oh my god, the portal disappeared. I'm going to have to sit on my ass here for the next month until... Oh, something's coming. Ah, uh, our human friend. Please, let us chat a while. It has been so many years since I last visited your Earth. So long since I collided across your open fields under the light of a full moon. Tell me of Earth. Tell me of what I have. Oh, I forget myself. How silly. You were born on the distant world Unzervault. I have visited there much more recently. The Mycon change and reform worlds with their deep children. These changes affect others, unfortunately. 
The fates of your world and your heart relate to these matters. Farewell, child. Aha, that's interesting. I wonder what he's talking about there. Whoa, that came speeding in. Ah, uh, hell. You know what? I'm going to kick your ass. This is Pro2418-B on a peaceful mission. This is Pro2418-B. We seek to make friendly contact with alien life forms. Priority override. New behavior dictated. Must break target into component materials. Well, time to see if these new weapons are any good. Whoa, we spawned really close, and I can't shoot for Toffee. Got it a glancing blow here. Get back here. Get back here. Yeah. So, took a bit of damage there, but I'm not really too upset with it. That's 550 RUs to stick in the bank, and I will be beating up any Cylandro probe that I come across now, because it's put me in a really bad mood missing that uh, portal. And it looks like another ship's coming in. Hello, my clever child. We have met again, and I am pleased. Your people are so beautiful, so unspoiled. Your instincts are like perfume. Your motives a shimmering crystal. The carnate forces of Urquhorn and Korah are twined about the memory of pain. They respond to these words. Hold, what you are doing to us is wrong. Why do you do this thing? Farewell, child. Last night as you slept, I touched your face and you smiled. But now you frown. A pity. Smiling is healthier. The enemy of your enemy is your friend, at least for a time. Farewell, child. Great, another really creepy race. But, oh, there's the portal reappearing, so we're going to head down it. Another race that's told us those words, hold, what you're doing to us is wrong, why do you do this thing? I guess that if we come across the Urquan, we will be using them. Anyway, it's time to dump this warp pod off with the Aralu and hopefully get our reward. of sharing the easy way with you excites us. If you have found the Urquan Warp Pod, this prospect can be made a reality. What a surprise! As we have always said, humans are our most resourceful and clever species. We are so proud of you, but don't worry that you shall have to wait. We are prepared. Even now, our technical personnel are equipping your ship with a custom version of our portal spawner device. The device is usable only in hyperspace. Whenever it is activated, the spawner will focus several interdimensional seat beams adjacent to your vessel, opening a temporary hole into quasi-space. Move quickly through the portal. After your ship has passed into quasi-space, you can choose any of the nearby portals which lead back to hyperspace, thus saving you needless transit time. Be keenly aware of this fact. The spawner requires a great deal of energy to function. We estimate that each time you use the device, it will consume 10 of your fuel units. Goodbye, clever child. Hell yes. See you next time, guys.